Most games and movies get grenades wrong. Whether it's tactically cooking a frag in Call of Duty, action heroes like Arnie and Sly pulling pins with their teeth, or the huge fireballs we see in classic blockbusters like Commando, or more recently in the Fast and Furious franchise. Games and movies have totally over-exaggerated the humble grenade. While there is a grain of truth to how games and movies depict handheld explosives, most of these depictions are blown way out of proportion. So that begs the question, where does the truth end and the action movie trope begin? Rudimentary grenades and hand-thrown explosives have been around since the time of the Byzantine Empire, around the mid-700s BC. The first modern hand grenade, however, was the Mills Bomb that was issued to frontline British troops fighting in the First World War. It resembles many fragmentation grenades that you may see in today's popular culture, with its notched and raised edges, colloquially known as a pineapple pattern. While these explosive things have existed in one form or another for hundreds of years, it's undoubtedly the frags we see in our modern movies and games today that are the cultural touchstone we are all familiar with. So to get the story on how grenades work in the real world, I caught up with the Royal Armoury's Keeper of Firearms and Artillery, Jonathan Ferguson. On the general side, how does a real grenade work? So you've got a cast metal body, you've got your uh, high explosive content filler, you've got your fuse that, that is now stuck in from the top, and then attached to the top of that is this lever, which is holding down this spring-loaded striker. And of course, the iconic pin that goes through that lever and holds it in place. So you pull out the pin, which frees up the lever. When you let go of it, the striker itself typically throws the lever away from the grenade, at which point you really do need to let go of it. <laughs> because what's happened is that striker has flipped over under spring pressure, slapped the percussion cap, just like in a firearm cartridge, and that fuse is now burning down to the middle where the splody stuff is. That explodey stuff is what has led to a number of tropes and misconceptions to be associated with the grenade. Chief among these is the fiery explosion that accompanies one going boom. Followed closely by those in the blast being tossed around like origami action figures. This whole grenades throwing chaps around like they're made of paper mache has been a long running trend and still exists in modern movies and games. Lobbing one of these towards a group of bad guys is an easy excuse for a movie to cut to an explosion and immediately inject some over the top action into any set piece. It was always entertaining to watch classic action films like Commando or the Rambo franchise and see bad guys flung into the next continent by a fiery blast that came from something smaller than the protagonist's fist. In reality, however, the end result was much less cinematic. In reality, because all that's happening is the explosive fracturing the casing and sending the case fragments flying through the air, all you see, you might glimpse a flash, but what you typically see if you watch the videos is a puff of smoke. Quite a big puff of smoke. Uh, what you can't see are the deadly fragments flying out, you know, within the sort of 50 meter effective range of a typical hand grenade. They're more than enough to go through your body or into your body and kill you. And there's also a blast effect. Now, there's not enough of a blast effect to fling you through the air. So yeah, it's, it's pretty um, anticlimactic when you actually see these things go off. Aside from the common fiery blast we see in our entertainment, there are a handful of tropes that have become key quirks or tactics in games. The ability to cook a grenade has been around in games for over a decade, with players on 2005's Day of Defeat source forums discussing how to drop grenades at your feet, pick them up later, and throw them again with a shorter timer, obviously very aware of how advantageous an early explosion can be. The core strategy when it comes to cooking your nades in games is to cut the enemy's response time, be that the time it takes for them to run away or throw the thing back at you. And while cooking a grenade means you can't wield a gun and thus leaves you open to fire for longer, taking that risk can be the difference between clearing a room and downing an enemy squad, or having your payload return to sender. In real life, however, the idea of keeping a bomb in your hand, or even picking one up that's been unfortunate enough to land in your vicinity, is a much more complicated and obviously riskier venture. Your average military-issued fragmentation grenade is not infallible. As they work on chemical fuses, there is not an exact safe time in which you can hold onto them. And depending on what military you're serving or what grenade you're throwing, fuses can vary in timing. And these are just the kind of uncertain variables you don't want to play with. Talking about the British and Commonwealth uh, experience. So they, their grenade, our grenades, I should say, range from three to four seconds. So if you cook a grenade and the recommended cooked cooking time I don't know what gas mark they're talking about, but uh, recommended cooking time is two seconds for the American grenade, 
Well, if you wait two seconds on a three to four second delay and either get it wrong, or there's a ma slight manufacturing flaw or whatever, your grenade's gone off on your hand. And we have accounts of, of that happening. The, a lot of these, this is medal award time. If you're practicing something like this, you've typically done something to, to win an award, or at least that's how we hear about it. Similarly, throwing your grenades back to the enemy has been a strategy in FPS games for a while as well, with one of the earliest appearances of the technique being in Day of Defeat Source and 2006's Call of Duty 3. It would then become a mainstay in modern action titles, appearing as a gameplay mechanic in everything from Battlefield to Uncharted. Interestingly, however, the tactic was born from real-life war stories. Throwing grenades back absolutely did happen. Again, it's not a tactic that you can really rely upon because if they have cooked the grenade or it's been rattling around on the floor for, for a few seconds, the window of time to pick it up and throw it is limited. Uh, and yet there are various accounts of this of this being done, but it did happen. So I've got an account here from a Captain Martin Brantner, uh, again, United States Marine Corps. This is in Vietnam. Uh, interestingly, I'm laughing again because he described this this bit of the battle almost like a snowball fight. He apparently threw back three grenades in a row and threw himself on the fourth. So uh, in one example, you've got proof that it absolutely did happen and it might happen more than once. From pretty much all of these tropes involving the person using a grenade in a certain way, potentially because it was medal winning, it was picked up by news and, you know, feel good propaganda. And yep. then that kind of starts the upward slope of popularity and exposure to it, and leaking into entertainment. I think you've hit the missing link there, and that's the, uh, the news media. Absolutely, the, this, these medal citations, these stories from you know when guys go back to their hometowns, the local papers would have picked it up. We're just so good at exaggeration and extrapolation, aren't we? Because it happened once, that's how it's always done. So games and movies may depict grenades in an exaggerated and unrealistic way, but as unrealistic as the trope may seem, there is actually a grain of truth behind it. While cooking a grenade or throwing an enemy's grenade back might not always be advisable in the heat of battle, those feats have happened. Admittedly, they happen in extraordinary circumstances, but these are what make for the most exciting stories and inspire what can sound like tall tales. And just like in real life, those unbelievable last second throws to clear out a room are exciting video game stories to recount too. As pieces of fiction, our games and movies allow us to relive these heroic deeds from the safety of our own home. So it's only natural that they would exaggerate the truth to create amazing action set pieces for us to realize. There may be no consistency in the world of film when it comes to explosions, but that's totally fine because their impacts exist and are contained within their own genres or universes. And while often a visual spectacle in games, grenade noises, flashes, and damage rarely behave realistically. Battlefield soldiers being able to survive a blast just feet away of them is unrealistic, and Call of Duty operatives being able to hurl them back as they blow up barely a couple of meters away, but only end up with a ringing in their ears and jelly on the screen is pretty ludicrous. But for those that want it, there are more realistic digital portrayals for grenades in games, like Armor or Escape from Tarkov, which even take into consideration individual pieces of shrapnel that are flung around a room when a grenade goes off. For the most part, a game will calculate the damage dealt to the player based on their distance from the initial explosion, from lethal at the origin and less damaging moving outwards in a sphere of coverage. More realistic titles, however, will simulate shrapnel patterns and object penetration to create a much deadlier and more unpredictable explosion. But again, this showcases the breadth of utility that the humble grenade has. Many games choose to tone down the damage potential to allow them to be a tool that rewards strategy rather than a damage dealer. Take the Call of Duty series for example, and I mean both the campaign and multiplayer in this instance. I'm sure I've got more kills by making an enemy move out of position to flee a grenade than I have with the actual explosion. While in the real world the objective is to throw your grenade in such a way that the enemy doesn't have time to react, in the virtual one it's often to gain a positional advantage. But what really allows games the wriggle room to explore what is possible with a handheld throwable is that in pop culture, the word grenade is now an extremely broad term. Anyone picking up a game with even the briefest knowledge about a grenade will know simply that if I throw this, an explosion of sorts will happen. And in many ways, that's enough. It has been fascinating to learn how something so dangerous and so volatile has both changed and inspired our fiction. 
while also growing into a virtual entity that nearly every action game features in some form. Even thinking about the bizarre versions of video game grenades we see can tell you just how much they can be co-opted and altered to fit the narrative and setting of the most bizarre pieces of fiction. Be they the fantastical Borderlands grenades that heal you, the ones we find in Death Stranding made from Norman Reedus's poop and blood, or the more realistic and deadly depictions in Tarkov or Rainbow Six Siege. The grenade is a versatile device that can add a big boom to your game and even bigger opportunities for gameplay and action. Shit. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Loadout. No doubt you've noticed that this looks a little different to other episodes, that's because we're all working from home right now, but I hope you still enjoyed the video nonetheless. If you did and you want to see the rest of the series, then you can check out our YouTube playlist and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any other episodes. And of course, we all here at GameSpot hope that you're all safe and well in the comfort of your own homes. Perfect excuse to stay inside and play video games, right?